All right, I don't know if I can do this or not. My, I'm left eye dominant and my left eye is swelling up. Got some weird goobers coming out of it too. Kind of sucks, I'm in the middle of nowhere. My buddy had to go up to some town over to go do some work related stuff. So he's gonna bring me back some eye drops and we'll see if I can pull this off. Woke up this morning and felt a little weep eyed, but I thought it was because we only had three hours sleep maybe because we were driving around the swamps last night in this big buggy. I woke up and my eyes been progressively swelling up and stuff coming out. So I'm hoping my eye will clean itself out naturally. We'll see what happens. I think after I do this, I'll probably go back and have a nap or something. That'll stop my eyeball from opening and shutting. <laughs> what a pain in the butt. Eye pain and discomfort. Really sucks, doesn't it? I think I can do this though. Let's see. Now, yesterday, I got chopped off for this lengthy email with a whole bunch of accounts written in from British Columbia. So I will start off on one. I might have a couple paragraphs I read yesterday. It doesn't matter. We'll see. I'll keep this eye shut. I think I can do this. So, the next part of his email, story six, an older couple shares. I was working on a painting of Sasquatch next to my work studio and my client had taken notice of it. My clients were an older couple, I want to say late 50s, early 60s. While I was setting up work, he said, quote, hey, I think I saw what, end quote, him and his wife, as recent as 2019. This was the story conveyed to me. We're sitting next to the fire in the late spring of 2019. They had a creek which meanders through their property and the neighbor's property. Our attention was directed to the creek when we heard a loud branch snap. We're used to having animals, deer, and even bears at times travel along the creek. So, we got up from our chairs to see what animal was traveling along the creek. As we got closer to the creek, we heard a splash, splash across the creek, and to our amazement, our eyes set upon a very tall, broad-shouldered, what looked like, hair-covered being, take a few steps and melt into the forest, heading north along the creek to the neighbors. They didn't see his face as it walked away from their direction. Another story with two witnesses. Story seven, late night driver. Working on a client I went to school, working on a client I went to school with, shared me this story. And he was in his late teens, or early 20s. He was driving down the road late one night around 11 o'clock. He said as he was driving, he drove past the biggest person he had ever seen in his life, standing smack in the middle of the road. He's driving a truck and he said it towered over his truck as he drove by and as he looked in the mirror he had seen it turn and watch him as, it drove, as he drove away. As he told me the story it gave me goosebumps. He said he couldn't remember much detail because it happened so fast but he gave him goosebumps reliving it. Would driving past a normal person give you goosebumps would be a memorable story? Probably not. He's in his mid-30s now but reminds but remembers it like it was yesterday. These three people's stories all happened in the same area with approximately, within a pro proximity of each other in the past 20 years. And this is just farmland with one thing in common, a major tributary, which is a hub for wildlife. Story 8 Worldwide. I was working on a client that grew up in Thailand and he had this story to share. I was young and I was home alone with my sister. He recounted that their home backed onto basically jungle. One day they watched a tall, hair-covered being with red eyes walk through their home and out the back door to the forest. Him and his sister both witnessed it. That's a little alarming. Story 9, Princeton. That's it. Oh, Princeton. That's in British Columbia. While adventuring in the backcountry near the copper mine in Princeton, my friends came across a large footprints in the snow in 2019. The imprints are so good, you can distinctly see the large toes probably at least 20 inches long. Large snow boot imprint is next to it. Probably one of the most amazing footprints I've ever seen personally. I'll try to see if you can, I'll try to see if you can share the image. He said the stride was like six feet or more in knee deep snow going uphill, followed for a while. My friend who shared the pick with me is a hunter like you, Steve. And he said his friend that came across the prints hunts more than him 
So if you could imagine how much time these guys put in the backcountry. So it goes to show, these things are out there. They've not died off like some people like to think. Where they come from, I have no idea. Some deep, dark holler, I don't know. Why are so many accounts red-eyed? What does that mean? I don't know. Story 10, trail camera. While putting up game cams in the Chehalis area in 2022, I mounted a camera and noticed on the edge of a root ball what looked like half a shoulder and distinct looking gray face with deep set eyes and mouth looking like a pissed off grizzly. The way they drooped their lower lip. My heart sank into my stomach. I turned to my girlfriend and asked, do you see this? Or are my eyes playing tricks on me? I stared at it a bit and then comfort came overcame me and I chuckled to finish setting up my camera. I proceeded to walk to the root ball which is over 75, which was about a 75 yard shooting lane to the fire, sorry, to the fur root ball. And it looked like nothing I had seen when I was setting up the camera. There was no sounds or anything and that was weird. Story 11, another heli trip. I got dropped off into the mountains between Harrison and Boston Bar for a few nights. On the first day I was sitting on the mountain observing and I could hear like a clank, clank, clank. Sort of like the sound of rocks falling but the sound would emanate like every one minute for like 20 seconds and then it did this for like five minutes. I'm in the middle of nowhere on a mountain listening to rock like clanks and I couldn't tell if it was echoing from the valley below or from underground. Summary. I was under the impression that these beings were in remote places in deep forests and mountainous caves but there but here I'm told three amazing encounters in just farmland only 10 minutes from where I live in the Fraser Valley. I recently bought a couple of quarter sections in rural areas in BC for my own hunting land. You know how it is with the bullshit. I'm on the same page. And I hope you get this whop I hope you get this whopper out there. It took four hours to type it. I'll probably remember more accounts after I send it. Thanks again, Steve. This has become quite the hub. I have a question for the listeners. Has anyone heard of encounters in the Burns Lake area? Personally for you. Okay, man, I got you. That's quite the invite. I might do that. We'll see when and where, man. I hope you're still here. When, when did you send this? Originally. This, this, this was quite the long email. And uh, absolutely appreciate you doing that. That's this is recent, right? All right. Email me back. I just might do that one day if, I, if it's the right timing, right? You're doing some digging. You are doing some digging, are you? Now, what's this? It says it's red, but I... Oh. Oh, I see. Okay, you got two... You got the photographs of the footprints. Perfect. I got to remember to share those in this video once I get back. Bear with me for a second, you guys, while I save these so I don't forget. And saved. All right, there you go. Distinct footprints, not a doubt about it, right? All right, man. Okay, hold on a minute. What else do we got? Lake Stevens, Washington, and walked on two legs. Mark, this is red. My one eyeball open. Sucks. This will help the people, and hopefully I can get answers. I'm 40 years old from Lake Stevens, Washington, near the Tulala Reservation. Grew up my whole life in these woods. Know of all the animals and the sounds in and the sounds. In the summer 2017, while camping at the Lake Connor Campground, my girl and I were in our tent when we distinctly heard a small two-legged humanoid thing land on our tent. And with two steps at a time, jumped down and intelligently tapped as it walked around the whole tent about three feet up and the tapping stopped at our tent door. Of course we were packing our things as fast as possible. My girlfriend let out a scream so loud I jumped a foot in the air. I said, what did you see? She said, something just reached under the tent door. I asked if it was a possum or a raccoon and she was in a daze and all she said, it wasn't a possum or a raccoon but seemed to have claws and scales on what little arms she's seen. 
a girl and I are now married and she can vouch for me. When we got outside of the tent, there was no way for this thing to land on our tent but from the sky. What lands out what lands out of the sky and messes with a person on purpose and in an intelligent way. This experience has changed my life forever. There's big things and little things out there in the woods every day. If anyone has had similar experiences, please email me. Thanks for all you do. Steve, you're my hero, and I hope you do what you do, exposing the truth for another 40 years or more. Hey, man, that's creepier and shit. I appreciate that email. If you want me to share your email, it is coopk815 at gmail.com. There you go. Hopefully you get some more answers too, man. Keep digging and keep sharing. That's creepy. Oh, my eyeball. Holy cow. This is discomfort. I don't know what's going on in it. Hey, Steve, it's me again. Who are you? You've read a story yesterday, the one about a 12-year-old that shot a huge fox that said, Don't shoot. And it informed him it had been tracking him for 40 years. It sort of confirms the sensation of being watched for the past couple of years. I thought I was paranoid. A few weeks ago, I realized that it was out there. I did the mind speak thing at it. Come on, F MFR, and get some of this. Standing in my back porch, smoking at around 10 p.m. All I got back was a chuckle. Thought for sure it was my imagination. Now I'm not sure. The reason I titled the last email One in a Million because that's what I am. I'm the one MFR that is an anomaly. I just recently diagnosed with epileptic seizures. Seizures, not epilepsy, just the seizures. Epilepsy is is caused by brain damage from a head injury, usually as a child. Had 16 MRIs, eight with contrast without half of them done at Plano Hospital and the other half done at Epilepsy Center at Parkland, Dallas. No brain damage. Only other causes for them is cancer and organ failure. In other words, you gotta be dying. The head of the department told me, Mr. Whitehurst, Seizures don't just fall out of the sky, except in your case, and you are an anomaly. Okay, so, epilept epileptics were considered demon possessions, so what the F? That's a little creepy, and I got another one. Sorry I was interrupted somehow, it hit send. Anyway, big, white, blocked teeth. His mouth, like I said, was as big as a truck tire. 18-wheeler tire. Okay, now you know. I just assumed I was seeing shit and figured it was, it was best to let life happen back there and I'd mind my own. So I went to the second bridge, not thinking about it all. The speed on how fast it covered the distance really blew me away. The bridges are at least a mile apart with the creek making 10 to 15 S-curves. Okay, I read that. Didn't I? Oh, hold on a minute. Sorry, I'm going to keep going. I don't think there's a follow-up. At the time, I didn't know the creek S curved right up to the fence next to me. The hulking image of the fence made no sense. The shape wasn't right for a bull of any breed, really. Brahmin or Santa. Okay, I already read that, right? Man, I'm really screwing up here. I'm sorry, you guys. Or maybe I didn't. Hold on. The hulking image up the fence made no sense. The shape wasn't right for a bull of any breed, really. Bra Brahmin or Santa Gertrude's only breed with the hump above the shoulders, which now I know was its head. When it threw the steel belting at me, the only reason it missed me is I turned around at that instant. It hit the truck so hard it raised up on two tires and slammed down hard enough to knock mud and stuff out of the fender wells, thus the dust. The explosion was it impacting the side of the bed above the fender well, and it looked like it had been hit with a cannonball. My ears are ringing. Totally disoriented. Buzzing sound was really loud. A bouncing bed is a landmine that when triggered buzzes and bounces up into the air two or three times and then explodes while three or four feet in the air to cause maximum casualties. Kill radius 20 meters. So I thought it was over. No. Wow. Wow. I hope 
hope I'm making sense today, you guys. I apologize if I'm not. These are all unread. I think they're follow-ups. This one's titled One in a Million Three. Apologies for the lack of description and details trying to shorten email. I never saw the creature stand upright. It was laying in such a way that it resembled a VW. Maybe it projected the image to me. I'm not sure. My dad had a golf station next to the VW dirt dealership in Amarillo when I was young. We washed and detailed every effing car or van delivered to that effer back then. They shipped them on a ship. They were coated in cosmoline, some kind of waxy ship that kept them from rusting during transport. It took kerosene and hot water pressure to get it off. Then had to polish the glass to get kerosene swirls out. I hated them effing things. I never saw a black one ever. And I'm a muscle car nut, so I looked for them at old farms and shit like that, so I knew I would have noticed it before. Not that it's a muscle car, but it is collectible. Like, like, it is collectible. Some people like them. And some of them would give Mustangs and Camaros a run for their money. The creature was shiny black. It was beautiful, really. He was massively built. From the 100 yards or so away, you could see the muscles rippling where it moved, when it moved. Its head was huge and kind of dome-shaped. No neck, that makes sense. Its shoulders were wide and thick chest. Arms built differently than ours probably reached his knees when he stood up. The longer I, the lo I think longer in the bicep and damn huge. He was about to run in and snatch a few hogs when we locked eyes. Big, blue, baseball size, and he bared his teeth at me. Big, blocked teeth like ours, not canine. They were about two inches wide and four to five inches long and clean white. Whoa. And oh story. As I look over my shoulder. <laughs> That's one hell of a terrifying experience, man. No, thank you. Alright, here we go. Next. This is titled, I'm in contact. I'm one of those warm and fuzzies and hear me out. All right, man, let's go. Stephen, we're gonna send this one more time. I know you're busy flying around and in hotels. Hope that's okay. I hate being away from home traveling. Dude, this is bugging the shit out of me. I have the book-sized email spiel below, but I can have a full-on conversation one-on-one. -on -one. I can, let me read that again. I'm sorry, you guys, I got one eye shut. I have the book-sized email spiel below, but I can have a full-on conversation one-to-one -one with the beings. I've learned crazy shit. I can't bounce these mind speak slash channeling slash hanging out with beings off of any other people to compare notes or learn to sharpen the skill because who the F else is doing this? You know, other than the people like me randomly reaching out to you, we're just scattered everywhere, but not talking to each other. I'm not saying I have 100% accuracy and I can just do whatever on command, but doubting, calling bullshit to beings' faces when they show up. The guidance being becoming true. It all persists no matter how I feel. Just effing stuck on this psychic medium side. I haven't had the experience of seeing one of these beings sneak around and stalk me. I've been stalked a handful of times, good or bad, by whoever, but it was always in that deniable out of sight sweet spot they stay tucked away but let me know they are there i know very real reasons why there's some ugly mfers in the u.s sneaking around being pure evil it's a mixed bag in the woods with how many creatures man you have no idea there are beings living the high life in those woods though and i'm jealous out of my mind haha <laughs> sometimes there were someone like you is around that could be like be like look, my dogs barking there's the epic silhouette what does it want can you mind speak with it because I don't get that hard-ass physical presence to test things like that on. I don't know if I want it but I'm so sick of hearing the wind I know that mic is picking up the wind I don't know if I want it but I'm so sick of hearing we welcome you we share our home we will follow you today in mind speak then look into the tree line and just see a slight shimmer and feel a presence. Oh yeah? Want to say hi? 
I like new friends. Maybe we can hang out. Nope. Stick snaps. Foot shovels. Shuffles. Feelings and shit with occasional ramp-ups of phenomena. I don't give an F about money or being famous. No offense, I don't really care about giving you some content for your next video, feeding your breadcrumbs of stories or whatever, man. Not that I'd mind if you did if you did about things I approve. You know what I mean. I'm not an attention seeker. I'm not an attention seeking toddler adult. I'm serious. I'm just sick of dealing with this side and no one really able to talk through it. I had a spiritual counselor before it it fell apart. Real effing fast when I started talking about things other than Jesus and angels. I don't know, man. You're busy. You got people selling you bullshit all day. You got real people giving you answers that you have to schedule in. As far as you know, I'm just a stranger typing this. Typing, but this is what I genuinely got. And I'm going to let it rest after this email. All right, man. We may have some answers for you. Uh, just looking at when I get home. So hang in there. Hang in there. Don't try not to be too frustrated. Um, yeah. Let me keep reading. I'll, I'll have a little spiel at the end here today. Here's another one. Hi, Steve. I'm glad to see you enjoying yourself down here in the States. I can't believe you read my email. Sorry it wasn't better written. Since writing that back in 2021 and watching your videos for so long, most of all the details regarding what I wrote to you have come back to me. It involves the woo. I don't know why I'm so compelled to write this, but don't want you to think I'm crazy or some kind of bullshitter. All of this shit really happened to me, or was my perception at the time. All this stuff happened in the Sequoia National Forest east of Porterville, California. The trip where my horse got loose in the night was on the Wishon Fork of the Thule River. That's where the trees were pushed over to block the trail. When my horse got loose, I was able to catch him as the tree that was blocking the trail was a big one, maybe five feet in diameter. Holy shit. And the horse couldn't find his way around it. As it was very dark at night, and we had a hard time picking our way around it in the daytime. It wasn't one of the trees that was recently pushed over and had been there a long time. Maybe he could have figured it out in time, but he was gone. But he wasn't gone too long before I got him. The snort I heard, kind of a nostril sound, wasn't really a horse sound. But I chalked it up to him or maybe a bear. The horse didn't freak out over it. I'm not sure if he ever heard it. My only choice was to try and remain calm and get my horse back. Also, I'm pretty good at tying up my horse. This was the place where the big tree fell down across the river on the hillside out of our sight. I remember that. I remembered that when I finally got to the spot where my buddy was camped. I rode down a steep embankment about a 12 foot drop and dislodged a big rock. It probably weighed over 20 pounds and it bumped into another rock, making a kind of a loud clunk sound. I somehow think that prompted the tree to fall down, making a pop so loud it could, have, it could be compared to a large caliber rifle. Now for the woo that I forgot. Oops. Come on. Now for the woo that I forgot before. When I rode down into the Kern Flats on the Kern River, where the big granite cliffs were, when I got when I first got down there, I went off trail and the first thing I saw was a black something a couple hundred yards away, right up close to the granite cliff wall. As soon as I saw it, for just an instant, it was gone. I gave some silent thanks and continued on, and the next thing that happened there was that I heard something that sounded like it jumped out of a tree and hauled ass across the leaf-covered ground. Not something big, but definitely heard something. I should have seen it. I went to the tree where I heard it and could find no signs to verify what I'd heard. Well, that was creepy. Incident number two, and I decided to go elsewhere. I just didn't feel right. This made for a long day for me, and I wound up at another spot maybe five miles away near a place called Grasshopper Flats. Some weird shit happened to me there. First thing was that I had the horse tied up to a pretty big tree and had my fly rod ready to catch my dinner, leaning up against the same tree. I wouldn't have left it in a place where the horse could get to it. I think I went off to answer the call. When I came back, the tip was broken off my fly rod and was laying on the ground. I tried to figure out how the horse could have done it, and it didn't add up to me. I had to catch my dinner using it that way, but caught a couple to eat. 
It was a long day, and I was pretty tired. So, check out this more weirdness. I just slept out cowboy style and had a good lightweight mummy bag. I woke up the next morning and had the most vivid recollection of being peeked at. Like something moving my bag a little to see me while I slept. I know this is hard to believe, but my reaction and thoughts were, quote, if you're going to eat me, go ahead, because I'm too tired to do anything about it. I just went back to sleep. Dude, I couldn't make this shit up. I'll remember that till the day I die. On another occasion, out of out of Balch Park, when the group of at least several tightly bunched deer came up on my right flank, going slightly uphill towards the ranger cabin, they looked at me and didn't shy off and just passed me up and continued in the direction towards the back of the cabin. In the time it took me to get turned around and get back down the trail a short ways and take the saddle off my mare and open some Vienna sausages, the loud sound of a pretty big tree limb being broken in what sounded like great pressure was heard from behind me, from behind the cabin, maybe 100 yards, not too far away, in the direction where the deer were headed. It was really loud. Anyway, thanks for letting me get this off my chest. I don't care who thinks I'm making this up, but I hope you don't. Thanks for all you're doing. Keep up the good work, Mark. I don't think you're making it up, Mark. And I'm with you. I don't care what anybody else thinks either, man. That's the key to being honest. Crazy. It's endless. Now, what do we got here? This is recent. I don't think too far away from where I am. We'll see. It's titled Roar on Video. Hello, Steve. You told my story last year about a number of experiences I've had in the past year in central Alabama. I, pre I appreciate you sharing them and what you do for our club of people and the people in need in your community. It takes a good, selfless, loving person to do those types of things, and I wholeheartedly believe you're one of them. True man's man. In my encounters, I have several close ups with no visuals and one with a visual. I don't know if I'm marked or it's strange coincidence, but I keep having experiences. I've had two instances this past hunting season, 23 and 24. These two videos were taken Thanksgiving Day 22 while on a family vacation in the Smoky Mountains. The night before, while on the deck of the cabin, I had the feeling of being watched. My kids were playing in the outdoor hot tub on the deck. And I was sitting in a chair beside it when I got this intense feeling of being stared at from the wood line about seven yards away. I got the kids rounded up and brought them inside very quickly, but in a non-alarming way. The next day my aunt was outside and said she heard a weird howl far off. So she got out her phone and started recording. She thought it was some bears she'd seen on the opposite hillside, but it howled again about 200 yards opposite side of the bears. When it howled, the bears started acting up furiously, like trying to scare off something. Steve, I've heard everything. As far as native wildlife goes in the southeast U.S., and I've never heard this. It wasn't like the one that yelled at me back in the mid-2000s. I had to break the video up into two separate videos so I could email them to you. One video is the howl, and the other one is of the bears acting up. This is 400 plus miles from where I've had my other experiences in central Alabama. So I'm thinking it's just my luck, LOL. Maybe this will help someone. Thank you for everything you do, Steve, and keep up the good fight. Sincerely, M from Alabama. All right. Let's have a listen. It's an odd sound. It's a short lunged sound compared to what's been sent in the past. It's possibly a wolf sound to me, but I don't know. I wasn't there, and obviously, it may not have been a wolf. I don't know if there's wolves there or not. What's the next one?
That sounds bear-ish to me, but I have never heard a bear make that sound myself. I've seen a lot of bears. That's a bear, it's a big mature one. Let me do that one more time. Short lung, deep, loud, bear-ish. I'm sure if it's a bear, it's a bear. I mean, all, all animals that make sounds make different tones, especially elk and moose. I've heard sounds kind of elk and moose that you wouldn't even believe is an elk or a moose to begin with ever, but. I appreciate you sending that in, man. It's a little unnerving to say the least. I'd be a little unnerved hearing a bear acting like that myself. I probably would have snuck in there and had a look at him and videotaped him myself. All right, what's this one? Probably short of words right now, but I'm just trying to hopefully get the whole pile of voices heard while my I've been keeping my eyeball closed the whole time, and it's definitely helping not blinking it. But it's swollen shut almost. Ugh. Big hairy bastard, not a human in Kansas. Hi Steve, I'm an ex-combat vet, served five tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, been wounded twice. I was in almost, I was in almost 14 years. When I came home back in 2011, I was stationed at Fort Leavenworth one night in January 2012. I was on guard detail at a medium-sized perimeter station, concrete walls two feet thick, and a solid steel blast door a foot thick just about a mile from the Missouri River. Oh, I, we read this a long time ago, but I'm going to read it again. My comrade stepped out to smoke. This was around midnight and in a snowstorm. He started banging on the door within a minute of being outside. I opened the door and like, what the F, you just went out there. He's like, there's something out here and it's not a man. It's not any animal he's ever heard. It's screaming at him, but I couldn't see it. So I stepped out with him. We could hear something very big, just into the woods about 100 feet away. Then we heard a scream, roar, what the F ever. We both went back inside and locked the door and within minutes, the thing started banging on the door with such force. It took me back to combat readiness in a flash. We looked at each other and the monitors in the station, and we could see only the top of its head. Long story short, we finally opened the door after it took off and found dents in the solid metal door, mind you. Yeah, it still freaks me out. And footprints in the snow, 21 inches long that lead over the perimeter fence, which is 15 feet high with razor wire, and the prints were headed towards the river. I'm a very rational person. I don't take shit, keep to myself, but had to share this. Never, excuse me, told anyone except my comrade who was on duty with me that night. It changed both of us to this day. Thanks for all you do, brother. Keep posting the stuff. We need to know what the F we're dealing with. You can use my first name, Michael. Thanks again for a release with no shame. That night will always be with me, just like being wounded has. That was one hell of a story. I never forgot that one. That one really put an imprint in my brain. Now, why was that right here marked as unread? I don't know. Now, give me a second. I gotta check my eyeball. There's one more I gotta get going, you guys. This eyeball is a little much and it's starting to sprinkle. Hi, Steve. Thanks, thanks for your authenticity and telling the truth, something that is very hard to find these days. I'll make this as short as possible. My name is Ian Harper and I don't care if you use my name. This sighting took place in the city, Poughkeepsie, New York, right next to the Hudson River. I was out the river with my best friend and my daughter, who was around nine years old at the time. It was 2014, late June, early July. The three of us were down by the river hanging out about 9 p.m. I caught some, something out of the corner of my eye and looked over. At first I thought someone let go of some helium balloons, but as I looked, I knew this was something very different. I asked my buddy, what the F is that? 
It was about 60 feet in the air, the size of a large beach ball, and was just kind of hovering there. We were both intrigued by this thing, so we approached it, trying to figure out what it was. It was light blue, darker blue on the outside, and got lighter and lighter towards the center. You could clearly see the blue was swirling and moving around inside this thing. It was very bright. The strange part of this whole sighting, as we approached it and, it and tried to follow it, it seemed to be trying to get away from us. The harder we tried, the higher and faster it went until eventually it was out of the sight. I headed east, it headed east towards the city. I remember saying, that thing knows we're following it and is trying to get away from us. To this day, it's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Sorry, I don't have a Bigfoot encounter, but I listen to your channel every day and I feel like I needed to email you for a long time. There's some crazy things going on and I think about this unexplainable blue object every day. Thanks for all you do and sharing this if you get it. Ian Harper. Appreciate that, man. And I'm glad you did send it in. Share it, because it all does go... Everything's going to fit together, right? I'm sure of it. Anyway, i got to get going. This eyeball is driving me bonks. And uh, my buddy just texted me, said he's got some eye drops and another cleaning thing. We'll try that, see what happens. And if not, i got to go to the doctor. There's, sh I get, there's shits coming out of my eye. i got two. One little red mark on the bottom lid. It looks like maybe I got bit in the night. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, what was I going to say? I got an email back confirmation. I'm going to be talking to Robert, the guy with the sunglasses, when I get home. That's going to be very interesting. And uh, my gut was burning to get a hold of him. So hopefully this this uh, this is a uh, very informative conversation we're going to have. And he's eager to talk to me. I'm eager to talk to him. We're going to share it with all the people. I got a lot of questions to ask, and I have a feeling. I just have a good feeling about this in a way, but I have a feeling of other puzzle pieces coming together for me and a lot of confirmation of some things that have been brought to my attention along this ride. And I'm going to feel confident to uh, share my true feelings on a lot of things fairly soon, all right? Now, I got to go. I'm sorry if this is short again, but there's nothing I can do about it. I got to get uh, this tended to because your eyesight is kind of important, especially when you're not at home and you're in a different country. And alone, and you got to drive. And eyesight's kind of handy, right? So, and I'm left eye dominant. Damn it. So, share my story at howtohunt.com. All right, you guys? Get it to me. <laughs> if I go blind, I'll get somebody else to start reading for me. This isn't going to stop. And I'll be back shortly. All right, man? Men and ladies. Sorry. Oh, man, I got to go.